It's showtime. Hey, welcome to Did You Watch Survivor Last Night? This is the only fun Survivor podcast. My name is Jake Shadell. Each week I ask my best friend, Thomas Powell, if he did indeed watch a certain reality show. Hey, Thomas, how you doing today? Jake, I am doing great. I, uh... You hear that there, there's, like, two movies? You hear that the, like, movies came out on the same day? Isn't that crazy? What if you saw both of them, mm-hmm. and they were, like, very different movies? What? How is that possible when both, when all the movies are on strike? Yeah. Shit, I crossed the picket line. The mm-hmm. movies, uh, the, the reels of film were outside picketing, and I just walked right past, because I was like, gotta Kick go rocks. see Barbie. Sorry, guys. Kick rocks into the film. Yeah. Out of my way, I'm trying to see my friends, Barbie and Ken, <laughs> and also Alan and Midge. Who is, who are Alan and Midge? Yeah, they're, um, they're kind of in there as a joke because Midge was a pregnant, uh, Barbie that was discontinued because people were like, this is kind of weird. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, then Alan is Ken's friend oh. and, uh, he's just kind of there hanging out. And uh, also, uh, all of uh, all of Ken's clothes fit him. That's that's so crazy. Yeah, it's here. convenient if you own both of them. You know, people don't always have that luxury on Survivor, so I have to say to you this week, Thomas, welcome to Race Wars. This is where the party ends. I can't stand here listening to you and your racist friends. Oh. Thank you. Uh, This week's episode was called Mutiny. Do you think that is a good episode title? Um, I, it's, you know, I mean, it's descriptive of a thing that happened in the episode, but I wouldn't say that it's like the best title I've ever heard. It's a little bare bones. Did you know this was apparently also the name of an episode in season seven? So I think it's a bad episode title. Yeah. You know what it feels like? It feels like when uh, a series that has had like a bunch of numbered installments in it Mm. does their first one in a long time. And they're like, well, we don't want to call it like Rocky seven or whatever. So they're like, we're going to call this uh, Rocky Balboa or we're going to call this John Rambo or something like that. That's what this felt like. Yeah. Well, no, but yeah. (laughs) Okay, whatever. Uh, Well, this episode first aired on November 9th, 2006. How old would you have been on November 9th, 2006, Tomas? Uh, Jake, I would have been 15 years old. I, too, would have been 15 years old. We both would have been sophomores. uh, Soft s'mores. Soft s'mores, November 9th. Nice time for a soft s'more, huh? For some soft s'mores, a classic summer treat. Mm-hmm. Uh, our high school football team, the Rockford Rams, played the Milford Mavericks in the regional finals this week. Oh, Milford. I kind of remember this happening. Uh, my mom is from Milford. That's where she grew up. And I remember that being a thing that my, my grandpa being like, oh, I see the Rams are playing uh, Milford. Yeah, it's the battle of alliteration. That's what we called it uh in 2006 that's what they recalled it how do you think we did Uh, i think that we won i'm gonna say it was 27 to 13 close we won 21 to 14 that was pretty pretty close matchup is what it sounds like to me uh yes indeed um so this week, uh, we start off on the I-2 tribe. JP2 leads a team huddle uh, where they plan on getting rid of Ozzy if they lose the next immunity challenge. However, Candace doesn't want to stick with this alliance. It's true. Uh, she wants to get back with Adam and Parvati. JP2 says, four Caucasians in the final four. I said, what is this, the March Madness? Oh... So Brad says it'll be every man for themselves after the merge, and everyone gets super offended by this. Why were people offended by this? Like, he's right. I mean, it's true. It's always really funny when people are like, 
it, it feels like are you the one uh, when they're with someone they know there isn't their match where people are like, no, our alliance is going to stay together forever. <laughs> There's absolutely no circumstance where we're going to turn against each other in any way. We're all winning. They should do that. They should all do... of them individually are like, and then at the end, they'll all vote for me. <laughs> they're all going to let me win. I want them to see, figure out a way to all win it in the end. Like they do on Are You The One. They have to like, I don't know, come to Jeff all together and be like, we're not voting anyone. They out. cancel. We yeah. The union, <laughs> the cast members unionize. Uh, they, yeah. they uh, are going to, what they're going to do is they're going to cancel the show after they all figure out how to win. Jeff's going to be like, you solved my riddle. <laughs> this has been why the show has been on the whole time. <laughs> Uh, so at this reward challenge, JP one offers them the opportunity to join the other tribe. Candace and JP two are the only people to mutiny. What did you think of this mutiny twist? Um, yeah, I thought it was an interesting little wrinkle to throw in there, but I also thought it was very stupid of both people to, to join another bigger tribe you're you're immediately putting a target on your back i feel like i guess the gamble that you make is that you if you get through like one or two then everybody kind of forgets that you're new and then probably they have it kind of happened this episode right it's like either you get voted Mm -hmm. off immediately or everyone kind of forgets that they were going to do that and then they move on to whatever bullshit they were already doing Um, yeah, so they get in a barrel that goes down a ramp, collect buoys, roll over logs, float across lagoon, collect flags, they can uh, dig up an axe. This is too too many steps, Jeff. Too much stuff going on. Um, bring back simple challenges. I don't don't know. Well, you know, they're they're trying to get coffee and they're trying to get letters from loved ones, so you gotta Mm -hmm. make them work Mm -hmm. for it. Mutineers are the first people to die, uh, Ozzy says. That was a fun line. I thought so, too. That was fun. It's a fun, fun little little line there. Uh, then the I-24 are excited to all be together at the reward. Ozzy says the mutiny solidified them, and they're a team to the end. Do you buy it? Uh, no, I do not. Why? Because this never happens? They never all stick together through the end? Yeah, that's never, ever true. And also, like, Yule is going to cut bait at the right time. Like, if anybody is going to eventually make a move, it's going to be Yule. Yule, a villain. I'm not even saying he's a villain. He's just a smart player. And so he knows that you can't just all win. (laughs) He's good at math. Do you you think we could do uh, Survivor Smart Guys versus Dumb Guys? I would love that. Would that be fun? They could just they could be like logic um, versus emotion, and the emotion tribe is just a bunch of dumb people. And get Carolyn back because she was always crying. You know, Kryolin, excuse me, she was always crying. So it's a dumb trait. That's um, right. I want to show where I can feel superior to people. <laughs> uh, JP two tells them his reasoning for joining them. Nate says in a talking head, JP two will be the first to go, and JP two works hard around camp to prove his worth. I mean, yeah, what else are you going to do in this situation? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's that you kind of have to do that. So that's this immunity challenge. They have to drop cannonballs on targets, collect buoys, and solve a word puzzle. Pretty simple stuff. I liked it. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Well, you think that. Um, why, do you say, why do you say that? Well, do you think it's going to be easy? Well, yeah. Well, uh, well, you will fig- figure it out a hack, and that made it easy for them. Yeah, but, you know, JP2 did bad. He did a bad job. So not as easy as it looks. JP2 did do a bad job. Uh, I did really like when JP2 got annoyed with JP1 for calling him out during the challenge. That was, okay, that was one of my favorite things that's ever happened was to, in, in like any of their uh, challenges is him being like, shut up, Jeff. And Jeff being like, Penner getting annoyed at me. <laughs> and just kept doing what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> but 
this really was when JP t- JP one was at his best, I think. Um, so I two wins. No, you didn't. I'm sorry. I have to do this once an episode. You say it so many times. <laughs> I can't help it. I did it when Jeff did it too. He's like, I two wins immunity, and I'm like, No, you didn't, Jeff. You're not on a tribe, no, Jeff. What if Jeff? Like came in at the final five one season and was like, "I'm part of this game now." Yeah, you want to be included now. Yeah. Which is it, buddy? I would love to see that. And they just like bring in Boston Rob to host the rest of it. It's like Mr. McMahon, like winning the Royal Rumble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like I'm here now, guys. This is my game. I don't want to host anymore. <laughs> it's part of. I'm part of the game. Jeff coming out to no chance in hell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good. I would love to see that. Jeff, make it happen. Smarten up, Probst. This is why you have got no chance in hell. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was good. That was a good mashup. Um, your regular girl talk. Regular Gil. Greg Gillis. That's right. Uh, so over on the railroad tribe, Candace talks to Parvati about what JP two's doing. Um, um, what? Yeah, good question. Oh, um, about what JP two was doing before they mutinied. Um, yeah, Adam wants to keep JP two now because he has no friends in the game anymore. This really was the point where I was like, I was like, Penner, what are you doing? Like, you're going to get voted out. And then <laughs> this happens so much in Survivor. Everybody's like, we can all agree we're going to vote him out if we lose. And then they lose and they're like, yeah, but what if we voted someone else out? Uh, I really liked when Nate said he's got to put on uh, Denzel today to convince Brad that they're voting for JP, too. That was really good. I like that. That was fun. I also, uh, at one point, Brad said that uh, JP must be smoking some good stuff to good. Uh, think he can come in. <laughs> it was cool. I was surprised that they put that on TV. It is really funny to think about the, uh, you know, like it was, there was like weed culture and there were jokes about it and movies and stuff, obviously, but like it was way more stigmatized than it is now. So my sister expects me at my niece's birthday in a few weeks but they don't even have legal weed in ohio isn't that ridiculous it's crazy that the sin city doesn't allow the ultimate sin yeah chiefing chief on the, some dang loud the the only sin they subscribe to is fucking it's, cinnabon it's absurd it's really it really is um anyway uh, let's get into these wildlife shots. Uh, so we had spider, we had egret, and we had the chicken. Thomas, what are two names for a male chicken? I believe a rooster and a cock, right? That is correct. They came up with the word rooster in the mid 18th century to separate it from the sexual connotation of the word. Uh, Where are chickens originally from? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Thank you. I'll say they're originally from Central and South America. Uh, Try South Asia, actually. They are from India. Okay. Uh, how many chickens are there? Ten billion. Try two point three okay. seven times as hard. <laughs> All right. So uh, it would be what uh, twenty three billion seven hundred million. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and what do they eat? Uh, they eat, like, grubs and, like, bugs and stuff, right? Yes, yeah, seeds, insects, and some smalls and snakes. Small, some small snakes and lizards that they can get their hands on. Or their beaks, I guess. They don't really have hands. We don't need to get into it. Um, what is the record for the oldest chicken? 
Oh, man. Uh, probably sitting in my fridge right now. Hey, oh. Uh, That's disgusting. No, the answer. If I'm going to say like 30 years. Uh, try like half as hard. 15 years. 16 years. Uh, they generally live to five, okay. between five and 10 years. Uh, true or false, because of their gregarious nature, they all eat together at the same time. True. That is, in fact, false. They develop a pecking order. Um, I can't believe you would trick me like that. You know, they're usually true, but uh, this one's actually You false. lied. <laughs> you didn't lie. How many chickens would it take to kill a fox? I, I'll say like 10. They could all peck it to death. Uh, there was a report of six hens pecking a fox to death. And how do you think a male initiates courtship? Um, do they like strut around? They will dance in a circle and then the female will bow if, if receptive and then they will kiss cloacas. You. Yeah, you're a prude. You hate. Uh, romance. What is it called when a hen begins to incubate her eggs? This is an adjective. This is like a throwback to Probst prose. Um. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's called going broody. Man, I really would not have guessed that. Going kind of broody right now. They're like, he'll never go broody mode, and they're wrong. More like broodine mode. Uh, that's what That was me in high school. Anyway, at Travel Council, uh, Jeff probes. JP1 says, looks like it's going to be a wet night. This show is excessively horny. <laughs> Jenny says they're going to pick off the mutineers like Zitz if they need to. JP2 expects that it could be him. Nate calls Candace a threat. I was watching... Candace was a target in this episode of Race Wars, as well as this week's episode of Heroes Thank vs. Villains that Ariel and I watched. <laughs> and... Uh, so it was very confusing to figure out what was happening. But we did finish Heroes vs. Villains this week, and uh, Ariel pointed out something that I, I don't think we ever talked about in our year, Sandra Yas Queen. But she said, Sandra is incredible at deflection. Oh, she's the best at it. I would say that that is her number one skill, is she, nobody is ever worried about her for some reason. Yeah, anytime somebody's like, should I be suspicious of you? She's just like, oh, hey, me? No, hey, I'm just She I'm really just is out. like the, that, that Jesse Farrar tweet, the like, the like, uh, how's old uh, Donnie going to wriggle out of this one? It's like, how's Sandra going to wriggle out of this one? It's like, ah, well, nevertheless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, she is great. Do you want to possibly not watch Survivor 44 and instead just watch Survivor Heroes versus Villains again? Uh, I gotta tell you that is a tempting thought. I would. I do really like that season. I'm always happy to watch it. Um, okay. Where were we? Uh, Brad calls them coming in late a huge deterrent to their success, but it's not enough. Uh, Brad is voted out 5-1. to one. Do you miss Brad? Um, not really. I mean, I, I had no, I thought Brad was fine, but I, he didn't really do much on this season. Yeah. Uh, I feel like ever since, um, he lost his red spot, uh, we kind of lost Brad. Yeah. I was going to say, I think the, the, really the only notable thing I can think of is that he had a headache at one point. Yeah. Um, it's fine. Uh, anyway, it is time now for, oh yes, of course, Thomas, you of course called me a clown last week, so can you tell us what this week's Quobst quiz is called? So nasty, that is probably somewhat of a travesty having me, then he told the people you can call me your majesty. What kind of clown are you? You might as well know where you fall in their ranks. Uh, this was by Simon Coward. That's funny, like Simon Cowell, but... Yeah. 
but you're a coward. Okay. Um, 1,530 points. Yeah, this is not a great quiz for this medium because it's just pictures of houses. There's like a little red house on a hill that looks like... Um, it's just the first It question. looks like almost uh, like a one-room schoolhouse kind of deal. Yeah, and this next one is like a like a country house, like a beach house. Yeah, it almost looks like um, either like a, a kind of chintzy looking newer apartment mm-hmm. building. Like it looks like it's a multi unit house or um, like an assisted like living facility. <laughs> uh, and there's like a cabin in the woods, and it's like on a mountain. There's a lot of fog. You can't really see it because yeah. it's super foggy. That seems spooky. I don't think I want that. And then there's a boat. Yeah, it's like a houseboat, probably. Yeah. Or like a yacht. Um, I'm going to go with the spooky cabin in the uh, woods. I'm going to pick the, the little red house. What will you eat for breakfast? Bananas, my feelings, crepes, cereal. Crepes sound delicious. I will have that. I am also going to pick crepes. Uh, where will you go on vacation? Bermuda, Bahamas. Ooh, I want to take you to Bermuda, Bahamas. Ooh, I want to take you to Bermuda, Bahamas. Ooh, I want to take you down to Kokomo. Sip it, 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 you flow. Well, I, I have a response to that. Because, okay. uh, you know, the options. Bermuda, France, New Jersey, and... We've been on the run, driving in the sun, looking out for number one. California, here we come, right back where we started from. California. It's <laughs> beautiful. Uh, pick a pet, monkey, robot dog, uh, vulture, and a pig. None of these are normal pets. Yeah, this is rough. If it was like a, a like a raven or something, I'd probably pick that. But um, I'm gonna pick the pig. Um, I don't really have a backyard for the pig to run around in like you. Um, so I think I'm just gonna pick the robot dog. Um, what do you do when you're not clowning around, reading, gaming? I'm always clowning, exercising. You know, I'm always clowning. You know me, I'm gaming. <laughs> What's your favorite of Gotta these? Gotta play my video games. Gamer moment. <laughs> what, what's your favorite of these movies? The Little Mermaid, Dracula, none. Star Wars, or none? I think that's a typo. That should be saying nope. Uh, I'm going to say none of those. A building is burning to the ground. What do you do? Run inside and save people. Watch from a distance. Try to distract the firemen. Pop popcorn. Pour a comically small amount of water on the oh, fire. Oh, what a good bit. Absolutely nothing. Live stream. Uh, run around, run around in circles. In circles. Uh, I am going to watch from a distance because I'm a regular cool guy. Okay. Thomas, I want you to read yours to me. What did you get? You're a sad clown. Aren't clowns supposed to be funny and laugh? Why is this one sad? Are his clown shoes too tight? Is he tired of his life being one big joke? Uh, here's mine. I said, this is barely a clown the same way you are barely tolerable. Uh, you always have to be different, don't you? What am I? Are you a mime? Yes, I'm a mime. (laughs) Oh, tough break. Yeah, just like I said last week, or the week before, whenever you said it. Oh, there's, uh, one... You're Mr. Mime. I'm Mr. Mime. And that means that you're dating Ash's mom. Ash's mom has got it going on. I missed her, my man. I think she's so fine. There is, there is a related quiz called "What Kind of Lobster Are You?" Longtime listeners will recall when we watched the Lobster, the movie. Um, so maybe we can do that one in the future. That would be fun. Yeah, real heads know that we watched the Lobster. <laughs> yeah, real, real heads know. Yeah. Um, okay, where are we, Thomas? Uh, what's your blue sky? Uh, Tom not Tom at blue sky dot social uh, Tom not Tom at twitter dot com also uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at DYWSLN constantly posting there we're also on YouTube 
now uh, the only fun survivor podcast that's this one uh, we also have a few shows on patreon which you can find at patreon.com slash just podcast that's all you're getting just podcasts yeah we'll we will sign up for ddp yoga uh what's the wrestling one that we do uh d y w w l w did you watch wrestling last week do you, I, uh, we'll we'll w- sign w- up w- for w- DDP w- yoga if you sign up for that. Yeah. Um, so only a hundred dollars a month. So that was actually pretty yeah. reasonably priced. Uh, do you want to give a shout out to the listeners on on the the fans of the podcast? Uh, I would love to thank the listeners. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm. And we, uh, if you want to. Review us on Apple or Spotify. Uh, you could do that, Thomas. What would they write, uh, and where would they write it if they wanted to write us a review? Um, I mean, they would do it on Apple Podcasts, and they would say, "This is this is my favorite podcast. I like it better than all the other podcasts. I give it a big thumbs up." Spotify does not allow me to leave reviews, but if I could, I would say. I almost said, "Have a great summer again." That's not <laughs> what you're supposed to say there. I would say. I look forward to seeing this in my Spotify wrapped. Yes. Um, And Thomas did already say it, but I'll say it once again. Till next week, have a great summer. Deuces. Sitting in the sun, count my money, fan by my summer breeze. Sweeter than the honey. Is counting my money Those greenbacks on the trees Comes a summer shower Drops of rain falling Sweeter than the Christmas chimes And hearing those jingles Upon the roof shingles Like Pennies, nickels, and dimes Though it's known That what I own Is not a large amount Fields of gold That I behold Are in my uh, The fellows, maybe? Okay. One of our nicknames was Seamus is Guys from Wrestling. That should be our nickname. Our nickname should be Seamus is Guys from Wrestling. And to top it all, when shadows fall, I look to heaven and I see there's a silver dollar in the sky. Can you wonder why I'm I'm sitting in the sun Count my money And happy as I can be And atop it all, when shadows fall, I look to heaven and I see there's a great big silver dollar in the sky shining down on me. Uh-huh. Welcome to Race Wars.